Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about an introduction to fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is the use of taxes, government transfers or government purchases of goods and services to shift the aggregate demand curve and to manage demand in the economy. So governments try to manage the public side. They can do this directly through uh, government spending, which is represented by G in this equation that we've seen in previous videos, but they also indirectly affect consumption and investment through tax rates. So they have a broad range of influence on the economy. Fiscal policy can be expansionary, in which case the government is heating up the economy, it is increasing government spending, and it is reducing taxation. So expansionary fiscal policy can be a combination of both, or it can be one or the other of reduction in tax or increases in spending. Contractionary fiscal policy is when the government tries to contract the size of the economy or cool it down if it's overheating. And it would do this by reducing government spending and increasing the tax rate. This would reduce aggregate demand in the economy and stop an economy from overheating if they're using contractionary during this time. Now, the theory on this is that fiscal policy should be counter-cyclical, not pro-cyclical. So pro-cyclical is when the economy, for example, is doing quite well, growth rates are high, inflation is high as well, and governments are spending more or reducing the tax rate. In this case, they are causing the economy to overheat and they are giving it a green light to heat up even further for inflation to grow and so on. So this is pro-cyclical fiscal policy. Economists would argue fiscal policy should counter the business cycle. This would mean that when the economy is, for example, overheating, what the government should do is reduce spending and increase tax rates, or if it's in recession, increase spending and reduce tax rates. This would counter the business cycle in this case. It would cool down the economy or halt it if it's overheating or stimulate it if it's not growing at a fast enough level. So counter the business cycle. Now, what we can see is the effectiveness of fiscal policy is based on the multiplier. So one euro of government spending can generate more than one euro in the economy. The size of this multiplier is based on three different things. The first thing that it's based on is something called the marginal propensity to consume, the amount of money that people spend in an economy. So for example, if a household receives an extra 100 euro in the economy, and they spend 50 euro of this, the marginal propensity to consume is 50% or 0.5. The higher this figure is, the greater the fiscal multiplier is. The more money circulates around in the economy and the more it adds to GDP. So government policy is more effective the higher the MPC. However, there are leakages in the economy. The marginal propensity to tax, how much people spend of extra money in terms of tax, how much is taken away in tax by the government, and how much of extra spending is leaked out of the economy in imports, money that leaves the economy through spending on foreign goods. Both of these reduce the size of the multiplier, which means that they reduce the effectiveness of fiscal policy. So an open economy tends to have quite a small multiplier in that case. Now, the difference in terms of spending and tax on the economy is also important. So the size of the shift in aggregate demand curve depends on the type of fiscal policy. So changes in government purchases have a more powerful effect on the economy than equal size changes in taxes or transfers. For example, in the US, Obama's administration back in 2008 uh, undertook a fiscal expansion in the states. The multipliers for spending was 1.57, but it was estimated at only 0.99 for taxation. So this shows the difference between uh, government spending and taxation multipliers and the effectiveness of these. These multipliers were based on a fiscal policy act called the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act in 2009 following the financial crisis of 787 billion. In terms of this act, it was tax incentives for households and individuals, a $400 tax credit per worker and $800 per, per, per couple. 
There was uh, changes in terms of companies as well, where we had uh, 13 billions to extend tax credits for renewable energy production. Companies were allowed to use current losses to offset profits for five years instead of two. There was also changes in education. So there was over 50, almost 54 billion to aid local districts to prevent layoffs and cutbacks. There was billions put in to modernize infrastructure and so on. There was healthcare um, expenditure, 86.8 billion for Medicaid allocated to that program to increase the funding there. There was also changes in terms of infrastructure expenditure where there was 27.5 billion allocated to highway and bridge construction projects, for example, direct spend into the economy. There was also um, uh, there was also renewable energy investment, six billion for renewable energies and electric transmission technologies. And finally, as well, in terms of housing, there was four billion allocated to the Department of Housing and Urban Development for repairing and modernizing public housing. So these are the different ways in which the expenditure fiscal policy can be enacted. I hope you call back to Cultonomics soon. Bye for now.